Hello and welcome to more Aurora. <clears throat> uh, now we're going to actually build some spaceships and explore our solar system and get our little galactic economy going. Oh yeah, so to design our spaceships we end up having to go to this class design sheet over here. That's the one up there. We click it and now we have to do all sorts of shenanigans to get this thing going. The first thing that we're going to want to build so you can select these categories here. This is just for flavor, um, but I prefer to stay with the theme. Otherwise things start looking a little bit messy. So yeah, like I said, these are just for your own enjoyment. So new class, uh, so yeah, make selection and I go to new class and I have geoservic ships, I have the Oba core. I don't want that name, so I can rename it down here and all my exploration ships are always called Event Horizon after that most excellent film where nothing went wrong and everything was amazing. So this this game, you kind of have to be careful because you can easily make mistakes in ship design and you can, it's so easy to not include critical components and just have things go terribly. So let's go through some of the things that this boat is going to need. It won't need armor. If it gets into a fight, it will just die. And that's just life. Deployment time. So this is going to be a military vessel because it's going to have some sensors on it. And what that means is that we have to pay attention to deployment time. If you exceed the deployment time, you get some sort of penalties in terms of maintenance supplies. And it's very easy to then run out of maintenance supplies. The ship breaks down and they're stranded in space. We wish to avoid this. So, and this is in months. So let's go a deployment time of 60 months. These guys are going to travel far and wide. Um, so, and it doesn't make too much of a difference. You can see 456 tons. If I go to 50, uh, it will change, but um, requires some components. So it's going to need some geological, geological sensors. This can help study bodies to determine what minerals there are. And I'm also going to give it some gravitational sensors. And the gravitational sensors are going to allow it to study where the jump points are. You don't have to put these in the same ship. I just prefer to. My exploration ship is an awesome survey ship. You are very free to split it up any which way you choose. Okay, but now there's one thing that this game does do, which is a little uh, awkward. So let's go through this. We want to put engines on it, and we also want to put thermal sensors on it. But you can see there's no engines here. That's because we actually have to design the engines. Uh. So we go to the next bit here, and this is the create project window. And okay, and now create research project. So there are a few things we're going to include here. We're going to need engines. <coughs> so we're actually going to create a research project, and then we have to research these new engines. I'm not going to change the name. I'll leave it like that. You select the technology here. That's fine. Engine power. I'll leave it where it is. Fuel consumption is at 0 0.8 instead of the one because of the, of the technology that we have. So that's fine. And everything here is fine too. So these are going to be military engines. So I'm just going to go click create project and that's done. Now, military engines have to go on military ships. Commercial engines go on commercial ships. This is important because you don't want what could be a commercial ship classed as a military ship. So while we're here, I'm also going to design some commercial engines. And the way we do that is you have to reduce the engine power to 50% or below. If you get the relevant technologies, you can go below 50%, but we'll be there. And you also have to increase the engine size to maximum. Oh, and then you can see it's listed as a commercial engine and that's actually really important. Okay, so that, those are the engines done. Okay, we, we still got a few more. We also need jump engines, okay? So once you've developed, identified a jump point, the only way you can go through it is if you have a jump engine, if you are tugged or part of a ship that has a jump drive that you can jump with, or if you've stabilized the jump point. Because we're at just a pure exploration vessel, I just want to give this thing some nice jump engines so it can move by itself. And when you go through the, through the options, there are all these options again. <clears throat> I don't really have, once you get the technologies, you can change the options. The main thing I'm concerned with here is the jump engine size. At the moment, as it is this jump engine, 
can only do a ship with 3,000 tons, and that's too little. I'm gonna go much bigger. So let's let's go to 50, and that's about 10,000 tons. Uh, let's let's go a little bit bigger. Let's go a little bit bigger. 65, 13,000 tons. That's that seems like a that sounds about fine. Okay. Now I also want to throw some thermal sensors on this boat as well. Thermal sensors. Um, so if you're familiar with submarines, um, <laughs> why submarines? You've got active sensors and passive sensors. Active sensors is when you send it out a pulse or a ping, and once you've sent it out, you detect where other things are based on the return signal. That's your active sensors. And you, there are active sensors in this game. Passive sensors are just listening to what's around you, and based on that, you can determine what else is there. Thermal sensors are also largely your long range sensors. So we're just gonna put this on this boat. These aren't active, these are just passive. And you can have some indication here in terms of what size of signal they can detect at what range. So one is a little small. Um, let's go with that five. And, and this will give us some indication. This isn't gonna be nearly big enough to do a whole solar system, not um, remotely, but it will give you some indication of if something is about, especially if it's a large thing. If you have no sensors on your ship, it's actually you're kind of blind to be quite honest and the very first thing that you'll know about when there's an enemy is is <laughs> what's been jokingly referred to as your hull sensors when their holes are put into it by this filthy xenos okay so we've created four projects here we've created our junk engines our two normal engines commercial and military and our thermal sensors okay so then we go to the research bit here and because I don't actually want to go through the pain of researching them I've kept these instant research points so I can go to the power and propulsion and now my two engine technologies should be here here's the commercial nuclear pulse engine so I'm just going to click instant and now that's done military engine where are you nuclear pulse engine you're done here instant that too that's done jump drive and this is my jump drive that's a bit more expensive instant that Okay, making progress. And then our sensors as well. Where are you? Thermal sensors. Okay, so now I've designed the components. Now I get to put the components on my ship. You can see now that the potential, the, the potential number of combinations are insanely large. And you can really design your ships in the way you want to. But we're going to have to refresh this because the engines aren't here yet. Just close this. It actually saves it. So don't have to worry about saving it. So now we'll click on our event horizon, our engines are here, and our jump drive is there too, and so is our thermal sensors. So let's put them on. Our thermal sensors are on, military jump drive. So the size of this jump drive is going to limit the size of this vessel. I can't go over 13,000 tons. Now if you want, you don't have to build a jump drive survey ship for your own solar system, but once they've surveyed the solar system, I, I'm going to, I want to immediately send them on. So I. I equip them with that kind of redundancy. You could just build a much smaller, much faster, only geological ship, but um, this is a slightly more inefficient way, but saves a bit of micromanagement. You can do things however you please. Um, so here, nuclear engine, this is a military engine. Let's throw this on. And now we can see how fast it's going. I probably should have made this engine a bit bigger. Bigger engines are more efficient. So, Okay, so that's about seven engines here, and we're going at the speed of 2,851 kilometers per second, which at the start of the game is, is pretty quick. But there are still some things we have to take care of. The first thing is maintenance life is very, very low, and that's bad because things are gonna break a lot. AFR is the annual failure, failure rate. So if it's at 100%, then I think that means one component will fail once a year, when it's like this, it's dead bad. The way we combat this is by throwing on some engineering spaces. And let's get maintenance life up to about two years. Okay, so that, that's brought um, our annual failure rate down a lot. Another thing we want to look at is our maintenance supplies. The maximum repair requires 458 um, maintenance supplies. It currently has 646. Being a long range servo vessel, I've noticed the jump drives often break a lot and they require a lot to 
repair. And the last thing you want is a stranded survey ship that can't get home because it doesn't have the supplies to repair those engines. So I like throwing on quite a lot of extra maintenance supplies. Okay, that's probably more than enough. Or we might have to um, work this around, but now the big critical component is the fuel. I currently have 23 days of fuel at four power and that isn't nearly enough. So let's throw a lot of fuel storage on until basically we're at maximum capacity for this jump drive. So just click to click to click to click. Um, if I go five here, haven't I actually done this before? Is that adding a few more at a time? Let's hope so. Okay. Hey, and we're just below 3,000, 13,000 tons. So what have we got? We've got a ship, 2,000. Um, that's kind of where I want to be at for this kind of ship. Um, 2,000 kilometers per second, maintenance life, th that seems fine. I think I've enough maintenance supplies, that seems fine. And 241 days of full power is less than I'd like it to be. I definitely prefer more, but we can send this ship back as it requires uh, refueling, so we can do that. So this will be our survey ship. Okay, and that's, so that's pretty cool. While we're here, let's design our freighter because I'm definitely going to want to freight some things around pretty quick sticks. Okay, we've got a new ship class. Uh, yeah, this is... <laughs> Unfortunately, when I did that, um, it changed the event to rise into a freighter ship. So let's undo that. Let's make you a geo survey ship. Freighter, okay. And just to keep things so I know what's going on, I just call my freighters haulers. And so this is going to be a commercial ship. So we don't have to worry about annual failure rate and supplies. And we're going to throw the commercial engine. Commercial engines tend to be much bigger, take up more space, but also less efficient. So uh, you're also going to need a cargo hold because, oh geez, <laughs> cargo hold standard is not the one I want. Oh yeah, I'm on five down here. So let's, let, let's get rid of these. Let's go with one. I think one is basically where you want to be at. Okay. So just for the cargo hold, we're already at 45,000 tons. Now what's in, you don't actually need deployment time, but I just, I, I just make it at least 12. It makes me uncomfortable otherwise. Now a big thing with your cargo freighters is that they actually need cargo shuttle bays because the, the freighter doesn't actually land on the planet where it's going. It just sits in orbit the person's space and you need cargo shuttle bays to ferry the stuff from the freighter onto the planet and vice versa. I think, I'm not 100% sure on the mechanics, but I think if the planet has a spaceport, it won't need a cargo shuttle bay. It's assumed that the planet provides them, but I always just attach a cargo shuttle bay. They aren't that big and the efficiency gains from depending on spaceports, um, I don't optimize to that degree. So they all get cargo shuttle bays. Okay, so it's quite big. It's already a lot bigger than our event horizon, but I also wanted to have more fuel so it can't go further. If you're new to this game, you're probably quite likely gonna end up running out of fuel at some point. So fuel storage, um, it's quite a lot of fuel. For a first freighter, I think this is fine. You could probably easily get away with having less fuel, but let's go with this. Okay, so we have our freighters and we have our event horizons. Now, as I showed in the last game, my shipyards are busy doing things. Um, I could still use them to build the ships, but not the naval shipyards because their capacities aren't actually big enough to build Defense Horizon. So what you can do is the game does allow you to start off with some instant build points. So if, the, if you select the ship that you want, you go to Miscellaneous, you have these instant build points. So I'm going to use some for my Defense Horizon. So I'm just going to say instant build or ask me supposed to ask me how much I want. So I did it once. So let's make three more. So now I have four. I have four lovely ships now, Event Horizon, tailor designed and built. And you also don't have to, but I'm also going to assign commanders to these ships because that's also quite good. And that'll help speed them up and also help the commanders get experience. I often find this isn't necessary, but for the sake of completeness, let's go for this. Okay, so we select an officer. 
is now the Events Horizon isn't a warship, it will be a military ship. So you have them here. Now I'm selecting my naval officers by survey. I think survey is the one I want. There isn't an analysis. So I think survey is, is the thing that I want. Um, and then this, I think, will help speed up the survey. Okay, fine. Let me make sure I get this right. Okay. So let's assign you. Okay, so each of these boats has a commander assigned to it. Okay, so now we have to give these things fleet orders. And we're not going to order them to survey everything one by one, considering how many asteroids there are. It, it's just a, the incorrect amount of, amount of micromanagement that you want. So what we can do, let's go to the naval organization. So that's this big fancy star destroyer up here. Click it and you get to the naval organization menu. So just because I'm lazy, they were sent to the battle fleet. These are just placeholders. And what I'm going to do is attach them. So they're their own individual fleets. Okay. And then inside each of these fleets, each of them has the event horizon. So yeah, there's a lot to say about giving fleets move orders. Um, so let's, let's go <laughs> through it a little bit. I'm going to send the first one directly to Mercury. We select the destinations, movement orders, Mercury, geological survey, Venus, just because I want to get these done quick steps. Okay. But now you can also give ships standing orders and the orders I'm going to give them is survey nearest body. That's mineral surveys. Now this is the primary standing order in the event that they've run out of survey nearest bodies. They're going to survey nearest survey location. This is looking for the jump points that'll connect us to the systems nearby. So those are the two orders I want to give them. There are also these condition, con primary condition orders. And what this means is I'm going to say, if fuel is less than 50%, go home and refuel. Okay. It's very, very easy to send these ships past where they can come back. Point of no return fuel wise, as it were. We should probably build some tankers to go rescue them. Cause that's almost certainly going to happen at some point. I'm going to some tea. Should always have some tea. Spiff in Brick would be proud. Okie doke. So that's this one. Um, and they're all going to get exactly the same set of orders, except I sent the first one to survey the nearest planets just because I want them done as a priority. Because the, the good stuff tends to fight and land on planets, and there is no guarantee. There is absolutely no guarantee that any situation any, is going to actually have minerals. So let's make sure I've got all these right. Fantastic. That looks good. Um, and then these are just going to go along on their own and do their thing. So now I think we're actually ready to start playing the game. And you can see the ships here as well. All this Mercury Geological Survey. Fantastic. So the two bars up here and for the time being, I think we only really have to worry about the top bar. And what this means is if I click an hour and I'm going to click an hour, every entire game is going to progress one hour. Did it do it? Why are these, these ships should be moving. Standing or the survey nearest body. Maybe they need a day. I'm so confused. This, this, this should, this is progress a day. Oh, good. Yes. So the way that the, the game works, it has like the main pulse here. It also has these sub pulses. Um, so the game progresses as a day, and sometimes you need a day to tick over before um, some orders go through. So the orders did come through. It just needed a day to pass. So. Uh, yeah, there's probably the right kind of time increment to go with at this point. And as I click it, they're going to fly around, plants are going to move, things are going to happen, they're doing surveys, and that's all nice and good. In terms of what's happened, you can click this little thingy up here, event window, and this will tell you all the things that has happened. When you see this last time increment, that means a turn has passed, a day has passed, and it'll tell you everything that has happened very often nothing happens. 
Here, for example, Events Horizon 3, under the command of Rear Admiral Ryan Hoed von Rossen 1, discovered minerals and tells us what minerals he's discovered. And once they've discovered a good chunk of the solar system, we'll look in quite some detail as to what we have found. But once again, clicking day by day is fairly tedious. So you can click this green button. Ah. And when you click this green button and then I click the time increment, the game will automatically tick over until something eventful happens that pauses the game. We can also click this events checkbox up here. And now all the events, the important ones anyways, will display in the top right hand corner. So let's 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 have a look at this. See, they go find about, do survey, survey, survey. And whilst this is happening, our shipyards are building, our scientists are researching, our construction yards are building. And I haven't displayed the asteroids, but you can see that's what these guys are running around doing. Oh my goodness, they're just running around discovering, doing the mineral surveys and the asteroids. So hopefully we're gonna find some good stuff on the planets. Otherwise the comets, you can often find some really good stuff on the comets as well. Generally on the planets, you're expecting to find large quantities of generally low accessible materials. On the comets, this tends to be the other way around very high concentrations of, of just somewhat less minerals. Um, so we're gonna have to just have a look around and see. But for the moment, let's just have a, let's have a, let's just let these guys. And you can see the one, he just went back to refuel. So that's good. It's not so much of a problem them running out of fuel inside the solar system, but when they're outside the solar system, that's, a, that's, that's less good. So now they're doing the outer reaches of the solar system, so that's great. Let's let them keep going. This shouldn't take much longer. Hey, they're busy going back and refueling, so that's good. Okay, doke. Okay, so something happened. Hey, commander experience, the mining bonus. Okay, and this guy's increased, but he's unassigned, and 5,000 tons of capacity has been added to one of our shipyards. So that's what paused the game. So now we can look, go back to our shipyards and do something different. So, right, this, this one increased its capacity by 5,000. This one didn't. When you have more ship slipways, um, it takes longer to increase the capacity. So, um, yeah, because you having three slipways to increase capacity takes exactly three times as long. So that's quite cool. Okay, so let's keep going. And soon they probably will start doing the gravitational surveys once they've scanned the entire solar system. Sometimes you get these things far out, which they'll take quite a while to get to. And this is our solar system, hey? This is all our planets as well. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, the jump drive on one of our ships has suffered a maintenance failure, but that's fine. It requires 458 maintenance supplies. The ship has 1600. So they'll just fix that for themselves. And then we've got some science research done. So now our factories will construct faster. Let's actually have a look. So we ordered a hundred factories to be built. And you can see it's built seven, uh, 29 of the hundred and all the other facilities are chugging along. And as our construction factories get built, we'll build faster. So that's quite cool. Okay, going back to refuel. Hey, gravitational survey. So as soon as, so they do no gravitational survey. This is this will be the last body to geologically survey. And well, hey, okay, some science has been done, but now our system has been completely surveyed for minerals. And now let's have a look at what we got. There are a few ways we can look through this. The one is by the system view window. And this will give us a whole heap of information. Um, so if there's more than one sun, you click the sun up here, we've only got one. So we'll start here. Colony cost. Okay. You want the lowest number possible. When it's the slowest possible, then the environment is perfect for you and everything is good. A value of 25 like Venus has is terrible, terrible, terrible. It will take a very, very long time to terraform. Did I mention terraforming is in this game too? And it's quite a critically important part. We'll want to get start terraforming. But that's for later. But we're going to look to see if there is a plant worth terraforming. 
So Venus is generally always not regarded, especially in the early game. It, it's to put people on here, everyone will have all the efforts committed to making sure everyone's alive, that there'll be no workers available to do any form of mining. So you have to terraform this thing before you can get mines on it. If there was enough minerals here that's worthwhile, you could put automated mines on. Um, but yeah, so you can see there is huge, huge, huge amounts of macassium, then the right neuridium on this planet, but the accessibility is super low. And if we ever run out of these minerals, we might look at this as an option, but for the moment, we can have much more efficient mines. So we're gonna look for better options. And also we're not terraforming this anytime soon. Unfortunately, nothing on Mercury, but Mars, what does Mars have? Mars, yeah, this is um, Corbomite, Boronite. This, these aren't what I'm looking for, um, which is unfortunate because Mars is quite easy to terraform. Gas giants typically only have Sorium, which is fuel. And we can actually send fuel harvesters. We can board ships that can harvest this fuel or a station and harvest it there. Um, so that's just fuel. So yeah, that's not what we're looking for. So now things are starting to get a little bit less good. Neutronium, then the right. So good neutronium, it's a good material. Quite a lot of it, but not much else. So let's talk about this as well. Um, let's just have a look over how mining works. So you have the accessibility here. And you can see here, we have this value of 8.2. This is just the sum of all the um, accessibilities. So a mine will mine every resource on the planet at its respective accessibility. So you can kind of think of it, a mine on earth will function at an efficiency of 8.2. It will mine from all of the minerals at the same time. And if there is only one mineral on a planet or an asteroid, um, even if it's a one, you can only mine that at a maximum efficiency of one. Um, but if you have the whole array fold out, you can get much better utility of the mine by mining all the minerals, even if they are at lower accessibility. So let's let's keep a look. Because what I'm really looking for is corindium, because corindium is what I need to make better, to make more mines. So Callisto, these are moons of Jupiter, and Jupiter, it has corindium, it has a lot of it, terrible accessibility, great uranium though. So we're looking for Corindium, that's Saturn. Things are starting to get a little bit desperate now, actually. Oh dear. Puck, okay. Okay, okay. I think we're gonna have to go for some comets. Um, these should have been terraformed. These should have been surveyed. Okay, so look, going through these one by one is a bit of a pain. So we don't have to do that. There is actually, an up, and normally you'd often go here first, open mineral survey window. So what we've established now is that there isn't really any planet here that we're interested in mining, which is really unfortunate. But we can go here, we can search, and then this will just give us all the resources that, that are available. And what we can do is, so it's searching by the uranium by default, but we can take to search sort by corindium. So we just change that zero to a one and we go search. And this will tell us everything that's available. Okay, doke. So our options are not great for corindium. We have one accessibility down here, but these are low quantities. We have chim yuk, okay. So we're also looking to see how many other options, minerals you can mine while you're at there on it. Uh, Earth is the best, but we're already there. We want to stretch our wings, as it were. And otherwise, we've got a gong gong. Yeah, so we can vent right and titanium from gong gong at an accessibility of one. And I think the other option is C207K2. I think this is going to be the one. I think we're going to start off with gong gong. So what I'm going to do is go create colony. And let me try and figure out exactly where this is. It's over here. Jeez, this is also bad. It's far away. So it's actually going to be hard to get there. And that could actually change the analysis. So I don't actually want to go that far away. Where are you? It definitely has enough. 
Corinthian. Faye, Faye's not been an option. You know what? <clears throat> I think I'm actually going to go for Chemyuk. I think that's. Hopefully, this is closer. And the reason is that you can always move them later on. And Macassum is also pretty important. Um, it doesn't have a lot of Corindium, but um, it's not that difficult to move. And I think I think Chemyuk is a lot closer. Although. Not super sure how to actually find it. There should be a way to show colonies here. The easiest way to find it is to send a ship there and see what happens. Hey, oh, there's C207K2. That's quite close. Just the old fashioned look with your eyeballs. Actually, if you go here, we can figure out where it's probably going to be. Let's look for Chimyuk. There must be an easier way. And if you're watching, if you know if there's an easier way than what I'm doing here, let me know. Looks like it's a comet. It is a comet. It is a comet. I do wish I'd show, tell you distance 792. Million, so that's quite far. Or is it? Or hail bop is hail bop is that? It's like a tenth of hail bop. So it must be around here somewhere. That's annoying. I wish I could. There must be an easier way to do this. There must be an easier way. Ha! Yeah, 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 there it is. Chimyuk. Chimyuk's fine. Chimyuk's actually... That's that's close enough. That is close enough. So, what did I do? I created... Yeah, so now I don't want this in my list anymore. So I'm going to go delete population. It's called the population. There's no one living here. No one's going to die. Okay? So now I did that. And I just closed this. And I opened it up again. And well, hey, I've just got Chimyuk. Now there's nothing on Chemyak yet. There's absolutely nothing here, but there is Corindium and Saurium and Macassium. So one Macassium, Saurium is fuel, and Corindium is here. And I'll definitely, definitely, um, what will I definitely do? I will definitely relocate the automated mines from here to somewhere else once these resources have been depleted. Um, so this is destination for automated mines. People can't survive there. So let's do that. So first things first, I'm going to need some ships. So let's auto build some ships. Okay, so now I've got some freighters. Um, so let's detach them. And then, oh yes, <laughs> you can drag these one by one, but that's a pain. You can't auto select here, but you can auto select here or group select. No, there was a way you definitely can but you can't drag them i thought i could drag them there's definitely a way you could drag them okay i'll figure that out but um i, I could swear you, you can auto select them but i'm sure you i thought you could drag them too but no matter all it for okay so this fleet here is going to i'm going to tell it to pick up automated mines from earth set into chumyuk and do that for a few times until I've shifted all my automated mines to Chimyuk. I currently have 88 on Earth, and I am making more. And as I said before, the reason why I'm after Corindium so badly is because automated mines require only Corindium to build. So with those automated mines, I can put more of them. So the first thing you want to do, tell your, your fleet, fuel and <laughs> resupply from colony, okay? Because this is going to be a cycle order load installation okay double click on automated mines and then chumyuk this has to be designated a colony or you can't unload installations that's why i called it a colony unload all installations 
and now I'll call cycle through so I can just go cycle moves um, okay so that the, this fleet will just pick up the, the automated mines drop them on Chimyuk and then in a little bit we will so <laughs> let's talk about how you can move minerals around freighters can move minerals but you will want to use mass drivers mass driver okay we have one mass driver so let's actually build another mass driver because you're definitely going to need one so I'm adjusting my capacity for construction factories down to 30% so I can add just one just one actually let's make five this might take a while so the mass drivers basically shoot mass minerals around the solar system it's a quality of life feature it's not realistic at all i suppose i guess if you really want to get into the techno bubble but basically if i have a mass driver on chemyak it can throw the minerals at earth and earth can catch it because it has a mass driver okay hand wavy techno bubble and that is by far the easiest way but i first have to get a mass driver to chemyak for the moment the minerals aren't urgent enough so they can just accumulate on chemyak for a while okay so that's going to happen but there's one more thing i can do I can assign a civilian administrator to Chemyak. And because it's only going to be mining there, I'm only interested in mining. So that's a way I can get a mining bonus. And you can see Moose requires an A3 level administrator because Chemyak is just a barren rock. Anyone will do. So let's start playing the turns. And there's the hauler. It's going back and forth, picking up automated mines, dropping them off, picking up automated mines, dropping them off. Doing the, and it's doing this thing well my event horizons i'm busy looking for jump points a science team why did it stop a science team okay so if you don't have a science queued up okay so i, I have research facilities available one nice thing about this game is that it will always stop it if you have spare capacity research so power and propulsion always a very high priority Let's start with the next best engines. Let's find them. Improved nuclear pulse technology. Okay, this will take a while. Uh, research points remaining, 6,000, making 1,600 per year. Uh, I can speed this up if I assign more labs or if they get a better bonus, but engine tech is, is important. Okay, so everyone's doing their thing, doing their thing good able to carry out its orders as there is no suitable destination oh my oh my this is bad <laughs> i've actually run out of fuel i've actually run out of fuel i made my fuel tanks too big so all the fuel is sitting on the ships okay so who is it so let's talk about fuel refineries so i have 100 fuel refineries so it's not as dire as it is fuel refineries turn sorium into fuel as long as have, i have sorium on my planet they will turn this into fuel at the fuel refinery so i'm making fuel and that's not going to end anytime soon because i'm mining sorium on earth and i'm also mining sorium on chim yuk and you can see on earth these are the minerals i have this isn't a major crisis and on chim yuk um yeah they, they build up but they build up slowly We've shifted 25 automated mines here and we'll continue to shift more. So who is it? Event Horizon 3 wants to refuel. It can't because I don't have fuel. So I'm just going to remove all orders and you can just going to orbit Earth until such time there is fuel to keep you going. Let's carry on. Yes, I, I, I thought I told you. I forgot to turn off the conditional order. Okay, so you should go to Earth. Let's get right this time. Standing orders. No, no order. No order. Just go to Earth. He's not playing about now. Okay, so now it's completed its orders. That's why I interrupted, and it's off to Earth. And there should be enough fuel for everyone else to do their thing. Hopefully. Same thing. Event Horizon Two. So we're going to do exactly the same thing. Standing orders, no condition. And as the fuel comes available, I will send them 
off again. Okay. Okay, so one inactive research facility. I built a new one, so that's why that happened. I just speed up the engine tech. So let's keep going. Let's get to, let's get to the jump points. Ah, finally, Event Horizon 4 has discovered a new jump point. Okay, so. Oh, 51% of fuel. That's no good. Oh, jeez. How much fuel do I have on Earth now? How much do I make in that meantime? 131,000. Oh boy, it's not great. Um, we only go next door, so let's take that down to thirty percent. Should be okay. Very easy to very easy to run out of fuel at this stage of the game. So movement orders for my survey ship. I'm going to remove that last order, and I'm going to explore this new system because I want to see what else is in this galaxy. And when you do pop into a new system, it will tend to take you straight here. So we are at Tekka, and there appear to be three planets and that's about it it seems to be quite an empty system you can click on the system view and you can see what we have here okay not a lot of planets but a lot of potential we've got colony cost of two on planet so if these guys have minerals this will be super super duper good and they have little atmosphere little when you have low atmosphere they're quite easy to terraform what's really impossible really really difficult is when you have a planet like venus with like a hundred atmospheres um so this atm here is number of atmospheres in reference to earth earth is just one so if you have like a hundred you have a hundred amount of atmospheres as to what earth has and these percentages is just the percentage composition so where are we here our event horizon four Okay, let's see what happens here. Okay, we have some surveys. Okay, so if we're added, do I want to keep my shipyards running? Let's add another 100,000, 10,000. Keep you busy. Okay, doing some asteroids. Oh, geez, Event Horizon 1 now. Can't doesn't have the fuel to do anything helpful. This is, I've never quite had it like this before. I've really, I, I think my fuel storages on these boats are just really big. I think that's what's happened, but uh, no matter. We'll just keep going with this one at the moment. And as we refine more fuel, things will keep going, shipyard, Okay, so I'm quite happy having one very big military shipyard to build those big military boats. That's fine. I should actually build more. Okay. Okay, you can stop now. If you want to interrupt the game, you click the green button and it usually takes a few ticks or so, and then that is a way to get that done. So now let's have a look at Tokyo and see what we have here in terms of our resources. So we've got some. We've got someone take you one, the super Jovian. That's just Saurium because it's basically a gas giant. And hey, this is interesting. This is this is a good plan. This is for colonies, for colonizing. It's got a low colony cost. It will be relatively easy to terraform. And it's got very good um well, I mean these ones are quite good for duranium and tritanium. Duranium I usually find is a fairly critical resource in the game. And um what else does it have? It's got an array of other lesser resources which are less important. Doesn't have corindium, but in terms of a colony destination, it's pretty good because it actually helps you jump start out civilian economy. So just having a colony is really good because it jump starts a civilian economy and the civilians it's kind of like private enterprises. They'll build mines and they'll build their own fleets to do kind of industry stuff. Um, and transport stuff and we actually use them to help reduce our load in terms of micromanagement. So unless something really obvious comes up, in fact, I'm definitely going to start building a colony here. If I find a better colony option in the near future, well, we'll continue to develop this one slowly, but it definitely has enough minerals here to be really worthwhile. There still might be better options. So if, if you're wondering, 
Hey, there's also a jump point here that's unexplored. Did you really discover that? That's quite good. That's quite good. Yeah, he, he discovered the jump point. So we could go through that and see what happens. And we can have a look here. So far, this is the galaxy we've discovered so far. In this world, we only have a hundred known systems. We discovered two. Okay, so what have we done so far? We have, let's go back to Sol. Let's go back to Sol. Wait, oh geez. I'm in the galaxy view. You just click the cross and you go back to Sol. Or Tekka, and then we click here and we select Sol, and now we're in Sol. Okay, so what have we done? We have designed our event horizon, our exploration ship. We've designed our hauler. We've discovered I don't have enough fuel for these ships. And what else I'm doing is I have developed a mining colony on Chimyak. There are now 90 automated mines there. Do I have a mass drive? I do have a mass driver here. Okay, so I basically shifted all my automated mines from Moose to Chemyak, which is, which is what I wanted to do. But I also need to send the mass driver. So this fleet is basically going to waste its time going back and forth consuming fuel because there's only like one or two or half um, automated mine will pick up. So let's stop it doing its job. And when I have a greater mass of automated mines, I can tell it to do something. But I need to get a mass driver to Chemyak so I can actually move those minerals. So load installation, load mass driver, and I only want to load one. Things have been improved in this game, but previously, in previous versions of Aurora, it's very, very easy to pick up all your mass drivers from Earth and take them somewhere else. This becomes a problem because now Earth can no longer receive minerals, but you can still shoot minerals at Earth. And in previous versions of Aurora, you can basically destroy your colony by accidentally taking away the last mass driver. That's a mistake. Don't do it. And load all installations and go back to Moose. And then you're done. So we're just telling it to just take one mass driver, no cycle move. And when that is done, come on, Mr. Hall. Okie dokie. Now we can go to Chemia. And you can see we've collected these minerals. So if we go to mining, we go mass drive destination, select moose, and that's done. Now, Chemyak will shoot all these minerals at Earth, and then they will serve to fuel my economy. Good, 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 good. And it can do about 5,000 tons. I think these are per annum numbers. I think all of these are per annum. So a little go one tick, just one more day. And now there should be nothing here. I, uh. So the mass driver shot minus 27, 27, 20, and 27 of these minerals back to Earth, and Earth received them. Uh, and if you go through these numbers, they somehow show up. Yeah, I think I would prefer it if it would tell us how much it received by a mass driver, but uh, it does not. Um, these orange numbers designate um, when we're running low on minerals, and in construction, these are the amount of minerals that I have ordered up in production for construction, and these are shipyard modifications, and these are refineries. So you can, kind of get, you can get an idea of how much resource you're using, and I'm using a lot of corindium, so that's why that's showing up. I think it's because it's a very large fraction of my total stockpile, which is why I'm mining Chemyak. Even though it only has 10,000, it will run out quite quickly, and then we'll move the automated mines. So yes, so we've explored our solar system. We found another solar system nearby, which we're going to almost certainly colonize. And yeah, we're going to, so next turn, we're going to do a number of things. We're going to have to... We're going to stabilize the jump point to Tekka so I can send in ships easily. So we're going to need a jump stabilizing module ship, and then we're going to need a colony ship, and then we're going to continue exploring the galaxy. So that's going to be the next episode. Um, I hope you're enjoying this. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Okay.